Brought to you by wikivd.com Red Dwarf Red Dwarf is a English science fiction comedy franchise which primarily consists of a television sitcom that aired on BBC Two between 1988 and 1999 and on Dave since 2009, gaining a cult following. To date, ten full series of the show plus one special miniseries have aired with the latest series dubbed Red Dwarf 12 set to air between October and November 2017. The series was created by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. In addition to the television episodes there are four novels, a radio version adapted from the audiobooks, two pilot episodes for an American version of the show tie-in books magazines, and other merchandise. Despite the pastiche of science fiction used as a backdrop, Red Dwarf is primarily a character-driven comedy with science fiction elements used as complementary plot devices. In the early episodes, a recurring source of comedy was the odd couple-style relationship between the two central characters of the show who have an intense dislike for each other yet are trapped together deep in space. The main characters are Dave Lister, the last known human alive and Arnold Rimmer a hologram of Lister's dead bunkmate. The other regular characters are Cataliform which evolved from the descendants of Lister's pregnant pet cat Frankenstein, Holly Red Dwarf's computer, Crichton, a service mechanoid, and Christine Koshonsky, an alternative reality version of Lister's long-lost love. One of the series' highest accolades came in 1994 when an episode from the sixth series Gunman of the Apocalypse won an International Emmy Award in the Popular Arts category. And in the same year the series was also awarded Best BBC Comedy Series. At the British Comedy Awards, the series attracted its highest ratings of more than 8 million viewers during the eighth series in 1999. The revived series on digital channel Dave has consistently delivered some of the highest ratings for non-PSB commissions in the UK. The show has been critically acclaimed, and has a Metacritic score of 84 one hundredths. Series 11 was voted Best Returning TV Sitcom and Comedy of the Year for 2016 by readers for the British Comedy Guide. Setting and Plot the main setting of the series is the eponymous mining spaceship Red Dwarf which is 6 miles long, 4 miles tall and 3 miles wide and is operated by the Jupiter Mining Corporation. In the first episode set sometime in the late 22nd century, an onboard radiation leak of cadmium-2 kills everyone except lowest-ranking technician Dave. Lister who is in suspended animation at the time and his pregnant cat Frankenstein, who is safe in the cargo hold. Following the accident, the ship's computer Holly keeps Lister in stasis until the radiation levels return to normal, a process that takes three million years. Lister therefore emerges as the last human being in the universe, but not alone on board the ship. His former bunkmate, and immediate superior Arnold Judas Rimmer is resurrected by Holly as a hologram to keep Lister sane. At the same time, a creature known only as Cat is the last member on board of Fela Sapiens, a race of humanoid felines that evolved in the ship's hold from Lister's cat Frankenstein and her kittens during the three million years that Lister was in stasis. The main dramatic thrust of the early series is Lister's desire to return home to Earth. Although the crew's ownership of an unlimited time-space travel drive in Series 7 was to partly negate this intention, as their journey begins, the not-so-intrepid crew encounters such phenomena as time distortions faster than light travel mutant diseases and strange life forms that had developed in the intervening millions of years. During the second series the group encountered the service mechanoid Crichton rescuing him from a long since crashed vessel. Initially Crichton only appeared in one episode of series two but, 
By the beginning of Series 3 he had become a regular character. At the end of Series 5, Red Dwarf itself is stolen by persons unknown forcing the crew to travel in the smaller Starbug craft for two series with the side effect that they lose contact with Holly. In Series 7 Rimmer departs the crew to take up the role of his alter ego. From a parallel universe Ace Rimmer, whose name has become a long-standing legend and a legacy passed down from dimension to dimension, Shortly afterwards, the crew encounters a parallel version of themselves from a universe in which Christine Koshonsky, Lister's long-term love interest, had been put into stasis at the time of the leak, and so became the last remaining human. A complicated series of events leaves Koshonsky stranded in the series' main universe, where she is forced to join the crew. At the end of Series 7, we learn that Crichton's service nanobots which had abandoned him years earlier were behind the theft of the Red Dwarf at the end of Series 5. At the beginning of the 8th series Crichton's nanobots reconstruct the Red Dwarf, which they had broken down into its constituent atoms. In the process, the entire crew of the ship including a pre-accident Rimmer are resurrected but the Starbug crew find themselves sentenced to two years in the ship's brig. The series ends, with a metal-eating virus loose on Red Dwarf. The entire resurrected crew evacuate save the original Dwarfers. In the cliffhanger ending, Rimmer is left stranded alone to face death. Nine years later, the four are once more the only beings on the ship. Rimmer is again a hologram Holly is offline and Lister is mourning Koshonsky lost to him out of an airlock some time previously. A chance to get back to Earth through a dimension warp presents itself. Although it is not quite what it appears to be it gives Lister new hope. When he learns that Koshonsky is still alive after all, the tenth series sees Lister still traveling with Rimmer Crichton and Cat on Red Dwarf in hopes of eventually locating Koshonsky above getting back to Earth. Neither the 10th nor 11th series have confirmed whether the Rimmer on board ship is the one who originally left the revived version or a third incarnation entirely, however. Episodes have alluded to him remembering events from both previous incarnations' lives. Production the first series aired on BBC Two in 1988. Ten further series have so far been produced, and a film has been in development almost continually since before Series 8 in 1999. Concept and Commission The concept for the show was originally developed from the sketch series Dave Hollins, Space Cadet on the BBC Radio 4 show Son of Cliché in the Mid-1980s written by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. Their influences came from films and television programs such as Silent Running Alien Dark Star and The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy but also had a large element of British-style comedy and satire thrown into the mix, ultimately molded into the form of a sitcom. Many visual and character elements bear similarities to the Trident nuclear submarine BBC documentary Defense of the Realm. Having first written the pilot script in 1983, the former spitting image writers had hawked their unusual and original script around, but it was rejected by everyone at the BBC, as it was believed a science fiction sitcom would not be popular. It was finally accepted by BBC North in 1986 a result of a spare budget being assigned for a second series of happy families that would never arise, and producer Paul Jackson's insistence that Red Dwarf should be filmed instead. The show was lucky to be remounted after an electrician strike partway through rehearsals in early 1987 shut the entire production down. The filming was rescheduled for September, and the pilot episode finally made it onto television screens on 15 February 1988. Casting 
Alan Rickman and Alfred Molina auditioned for roles in the series, with Molina being cast as Rimmer. However, after Molina had difficulties with the concept of the series and of his role in particular, the role was recast and filled by Chris Barry, a professional voice actor and impressionist who had previously worked with both the writers on Spitting Image and with the producers on Happy Families and Jasper Carra Productions. Craig Charles, a Liverpudlian punk poet, was given the role of Dave Lister. He was approached by the production team for his opinion about the cat character as they were concerned it may be considered by people as racist. Charles described Cat as pretty cool, and after reading the script, he decided he wanted to audition for the part of Dave Lister. Laconic stand-up comedian Norman Lovett, who had originally tried out for the role of Rimmer, was kept in the show as Holly the senile computer of the titular ship. A professional dancer and singer Danny John Jules arriving half an hour late for his appointment stood out as the cat immediately. This was partly due to his cool exterior dedicated research, and his showing up in character wearing his father's 1950s style zoot suit. Writing, producing and directing Grant and Naylor wrote the first six series together. Grant left in 1995 to pursue other projects leaving Naylor to write series seven and eight with a group of new writers including Paul Alexander and actor Robert Llewellyn who portrayed the character Crichton. For the most part Ed By produced and directed the series. He left before Series 5 due to a scheduling clash Sir Juliet May took over as director. May parted ways with the show halfway through the series for personal and professional reasons in Grant and Naylor took over direction of the series in addition to writing and producing. Series 6 was directed by Andy Deremony and Ed By returned to direct Series 7 and 8. Series 1, 2 and 3 were made by Paul Jackson Productions with subsequent series produced by the writer's own company Grant Naylor Productions for BBC North. All eight series were broadcast on BBC Two. At the beginning of Series 4 production moved from BBC North's new broadcasting house in Manchester to Shepperton. Theme song and music The theme tune and incidental music were written and performed by Howard Goodall, with the distinctive vocals on the closing theme tune by Jenna Russell. The first two series used a relatively sombre instrumental version of the closing theme. For the opening titles, from Series 3 onwards, this switched to a more upbeat version. Goodall also wrote music for the show's various songs including Tongue Tied with lyrics written by Grant and Naylor. Danny John Jules reorchestrated and released Tongue Tied in October 1993. It reached number 17 on the UK charts. Goodall himself sang the Rimmer song Heard during the Series 7 episode Blue to which Chris Barry mimed. Remastered In 1998 on the 10th anniversary of the show's first airing, the first three series of Red Dwarf were remastered and released on VHS. The remastering included replacing model shots with computer graphics cutting certain dialogue and scenes re-filming Norman Lovett's Holly footage creating a consistent set of opening titles, replacing music and creating ambient sound effects with a digital master. The remastered series were released in a four-disc DVD box set The Body Snatcher Collection in 2007. Red Dwarf Back to Earth in 2008 a three-episode production was commissioned by the digital channel Dave. Red Dwarf Back to Earth was broadcast over the Easter weekend of 2009 along with a making of documentary. The episode was set nine years after the events of Only the Good. The storyline involves the characters arriving back on Earth circa 2009 only to find that they are characters in a TV show called Red Dwarf. 
Koshonsky is supposedly dead, and Holly is offline due to water damage caused by Lister leaving a tap running. Actress Sophie Winkleman played a character called Katerina, a resurrected hologram of a Red Dwarf science officer intent on replacing Rimmer. To achieve a more cinematic atmosphere back to Earth was not filmed in front of a studio audience. Some previous Red Dwarf episodes had been shot in that way but back to Earth represented the first time that a laughter track was not added before broadcast. It was also the first episode of Red Dwarf to be filmed in high definition. The specials were televised over three nights starting on Friday 10 April 2009. The broadcast received record ratings for Freeview Channel Dave. The first of the three episodes represented the UK's highest ever viewing figures for a commissioned program on a digital network. Back to Earth was released on DVD on 15 June 2009 and on Blu-ray on 31 August 2009. Back to Earth was subsequently described on the series' official website as for all intents and purposes the ninth series of Red Dwarf. This placement was confirmed when Series 10 was commissioned and branded as the 10th series although back to Earth continues not to be referred to as Series 9 on home media or digital releases. Red Dwarf X On 10 April 2011 Dave announced it had commissioned a six-episode Red Dwarf Series 10 to be broadcast on Dave in late 2012. Filming dates for the new series Red Dwarf X were announced on the 11th of November 2011 along with confirmation that the series would be shot at Shepperton Studios in front of an audience. Principal filming began on the 16th of December 2011 and ended on the 27th of January 2012 and the cast and crew subsequently returned for six days filming pickups discounting guest stars. Only the core cast of Charles Barry Llewellyn and John Jules returned for Series 10 with Annette and Lovett absent though the scripts include references to Koshonsky and Holly. On 20 July 2012, a 55-second trailer for Series 10 was released on Facebook followed by a new teaser every Friday. The new series debuted on Thursday 4 October 2012. Red Dwarf 11 and 12 Following Series 10 which attracted high viewing figures Dave Doug Naylor, and the cast showed strong interest in making another series. During the Dimension Jump fan convention in May 2013, Doug Naylor stated that discussions were ongoing with all involved parties, and while arrangements had not been finalized he hoped shooting could begin in February 2014. In October 2013 Robert Llewellyn posted on his blog stating that an 11th series would happen, and that it would be sometime in 2014. Llewellyn later removed the post from his blog, and Doug Naylor issued a statement on Twitter saying, getting tweets claiming Red Dwarf 11 is commissioned. Not true. Not yet. However, in January 2014 Danny John Jules stated that the 11th series of Red Dwarf was in the process of being written. At the April 2014 Sci-Fi Scarborough Festival during the Red Dwarf cast panel, Danny John Jules stated that filming of the 11th series would commence in October 2014, with an expected release of Autumn 2015 on Dave. On 2 May 2015, at the Dimension Jump 18 convention Naylor announced that an 11th and a 12th series had been commissioned. The two series would be shot back-to-back -to -back towards the end of 2015 for broadcast on Dave in 2016 and 2017 respectively and would be co-produced by Baby Cow Productions with company CEO Henry Normal Executive producing the new episodes. Series 11 and 12 were filmed back-to-back -back at Pinewood Studios between November 2015 and March 2016. The 11th series premiered on UK TV's video on-demand service UK TV Play on 15 September 2016.
a week ahead of its broadcast transmission on the 22nd of September. On the 8th of September 2017, it was announced that Red Dwarf 12 would begin broadcasting on Dave on the 12th of October 2017. And on the 15th of September 2017, it was further announced that each episode would preview a week earlier via the UK TV Play Video On Demand service, effectively meaning that Series 12 would be starting on the 5th of October 2017. Themes Red Dwarf was founded on the standard sitcom focus of a disparate and frequently dysfunctional group of individuals living together in a restricted setting, with the main characters routinely displaying their cowardice, incompetence and laziness. While exchanging insulting and sarcastic dialogue the series provided a humorous antidote to the fearless and morally upright space explorers typically found in science fiction series. With its main characters acting bravely only when there was no other possible alternative, the increasing science fiction elements of the series were treated seriously by creators Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. Satire parody and drama were alternately woven into the episodes, referencing other television series, films and books. These have included references to the likes of 2001, A Space Odyssey, Top Gun, Robocop, Star Wars, Citizen Kane, The Wild One, High Noon, Rebel Without a Cause, Casablanca, Easy Rider, The Terminator, and Pride and Prejudice. The writers based the whole theme of some episodes on the plots of feature films. The series' three-episode polymorph references and parodies key moments from Alien, from Series 4. Camille echoes key scenes from Casablanca while Meltdown borrows the main plot from Westworld. For Series 9, Back to Earth was partially inspired by Blade Runner. The series' themes are not limited to films or television, having also incorporated historical events and figures. Religion also plays a part in the series, as a significant factor in the ultimate fate of the cat race, and the perception of Lister as their god, both within the episode Waiting for God, as well as the crew meeting a man they believe to be Jesus Christ in series 10 episode Lemons. The series 7 episode titled Uroboros derives its name and theme from the ancient mythological snake by the same name. The series explores many science fiction staples such as time travel paradoxes, the question of determinism and free will, the pursuit of happiness in virtual reality and, crucially to the show's premise of Lister being the last human, the near certainty of the human species' extinction some time in the far future. Aliens do not feature in the series as Grant and Naylor decided very early in the process that they did not want aliens involved. This is usually addressed with Rimmer's belief in extraterrestrial life being shot down, such as a vessel he believes to be an alien ship turning out to be a garbage pod. However, there are non-human life forms such as evolutions of Earth species robotic or holo life forms created by humans and a kind of genetically engineered life form. An artificially created creature, simulants, and GELFs frequently serve as antagonists among the later series of the show. Hallmarks The series developed its own distinct vocabulary. Words and phrases such as hologrammatic, Dollar Pound Fellas Sapiens Simulants GELF Space Weevil and Zero G Football appear throughout the series highlighting a development in language, political climate, technology, evolution and culture in the future. The creators also employed a vocabulary of fictional expletives in order to avoid using potentially offensive words in the show and to give nuance to futuristic colloquial language, in particular smeg features prominently alongside the terms Jimboid and goit. Critical reactions The changes that were made to the series' cast setting created themes and even production values. 
from series to series have meant that opinions differ greatly between fans and critics alike as to the quality of certain series. In the Great Red Dwarf debate, published in Volume 2 Issue 3 of the Red Dwarf's magazine science fiction writers Steve Lyons and Joe Nazzaro both argued on the pros and cons of the early series against the later series. Lyons stated that what the show once had was a unique balance of sci-fi comedy, which worked magnificently. Nazaro agreed that the first two series are very original and very funny but went on to say that it wasn't until series 3 that the show hit its stride. Series 6 is regarded as a continuation of the Monster of the Week philosophy of Series 5, which was nevertheless considered to be visually impressive. Discussions revolve around the quality of Series 6 seen by viewers as just as good as the earlier series, but has been criticized as a descent into formulaic comedy with an unwelcome change of setting. The changes seen in Series 7 were seen by some as a disappointment, while much slicker and higher budget in appearance the shift away from outright sitcom and into something approaching comedy drama was seen as a move in the wrong direction. Furthermore, the attempt to shift back into traditional sitcom format for Series 8 was greeted with a response that was similarly lukewarm. There was criticism aimed at the decision to resurrect the entire crew of Red Dwarf as it was felt this detracted from the series' central premise of Lister being the last human being alive. There are other critics who feel that series 7 and 8 are no weaker than the earlier series. However, and the topic is the subject of constant fervent debate among the show's fan base. Achievements Although the pilot episode of the show gathered over 4 million viewers, viewing figures dipped in successive episodes and the first series had generally poor ratings. Through to Series 6 the ratings had steadily increased and peaked at over 6 million viewers, achieved with the episode Gunman of the Apocalypse. When the series returned in 1999 it gained the highest audience figures yet. Over 8 million viewers tuned in for Series 8's opening episode Back in the Red, Part 1. In its 8th series history, the series has won numerous awards including the Royal Television Society Award for Special Effects, the British Science Fiction Award for Best Dramatic Presentation, as well as an International Emmy Award for Series 6 episode Gunman of the Apocalypse which tied with an absolutely fabulous episode Hospital in the Popular Arts category. The show had also been nominated for the International Emmy Award in 1987, 1989 and 1992. Series 6 won a British Comedy Award for Best BBC Comedy Series. The video sales have won eight gold awards from the British Video Association and the series still holds the record for being BBC Two's longest-running highest-rated sitcom. In 2007 the series was voted Best Sci-Fi Show of All Time by the readers of Radio Times magazine. Editor Gil Hudson stated that this result had surprised them as the series had not given any new episodes this century. In January 2017 Series 11 was voted Best Returning TV Sitcom and Comedy of the Year for 2016 by readers for the British Comedy Guide. Spin-offs and merchandise The show's logo and characters have appeared on a wide range of merchandise. Red Dwarf has also been spun off in a variety of different media formats. For instance the song, Tongue Tied featured in the Parallel Universe episode of the show, was released in 1993 as a single and became a top 20 UK hit for Danny John Jules. Stage plays of the show have been produced through Black Yakka Theatre Group in Perth, Western Australia who were given permission by Grant Naylor Productions to mount stage versions of certain episodes in 2002, 2004 and 2006. 
In October 2006, an interactive quiz DVD entitled Red Dwarf Beat the Geek was released hosted by Norman Lovett and Hattie Hayridge both reprising their roles as Holly. Novels Working together under the name Grant Naylor, the creators of the series collaboratively wrote two novels. The first, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers was published in November 1989 and incorporates plot lines from several episodes of the show's first two series. The second novel, Better Than Life, followed in October 1990 and is largely based on a second series episode of the same name. Together the two novels provide expanded backstory and development of the series' principal characters and themes. The authors began work on a sequel to Better Than Life called The Last Human. But Rob Grant was drawn away from Red Dwarf by an interest in other projects. Still owing Penguin publishing two more Red Dwarf novels Grant and Naylor decided to each write an alternative sequel to Better Than Life. Two completely different sequels were made as a result, each presenting a possible version of the story's continuation. Last Human by Doug Naylor adds Koshonsky to the crew and places more emphasis on the science fiction and plot elements. While Rob Grant's novel Backwards is more in keeping with the previous two novels and borrows more extensively from established television stories, an omnibus edition of the first two novels was released in 1992 including edits to the original text and extra material such as the original pilot script of the TV series. All four novels have been released in audiobook format the first two read by Chris Barry, Last Human read by Craig Charles and Backwards read by author Rob Grant. In December 2009, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers was released in Germany with the title Rota Z Werg. Home Video Releases For the initial release of the VHS editions episodes of Red Dwarf were separated, and two volumes released for each series labeled Byte 1 and Byte 2. These videos were named after the first episode of the three presented on the tape as was typical with other BBC video releases at the time. However on occasions the BBC decided to ignore the original running order and use the most popular episodes from the series. To maximize sales of the videos, for Series 3 Body Swap and Time Slides were swapped round so that the latter could receive top billing on the second VHS volume. For the second VHS volume of Series 1 Confidence and Paranoia was given top billing. Even though the original broadcast order was retained, this was due to the leading episode being Waiting for God which shared its name with the title of another comedy series, and for Series 5. Back to Reality and Quarantine were given top billing on the respective video release, which completely reorganized the order of episodes, from that in which they were originally broadcast. Future releases would increasingly observe authenticity with the original broadcast context. All eight series were made available on VHS, and three episodes of Series 7 were also released as special extended, sick versions, with extra scenes and no laugh track. The remastered versions of Series 1-3 were also released individually and in a complete box set. Finally, two outtake videos were released Smeg Ups in 1994 and its sequel Smeg Outs in 1995. DVD releases The first eight series have since been released on DVD in Region 1, 2, and 4 each, with a bonus disc of extra material and each release from Series 3 onwards being accompanied by an original documentary about the making of each respective series. Regions 2 and 4 have also seen the release of two Just the Show's Digipack box sets containing the episodes from Series 1 IV and V8 with static menus and no extras. Red Dwarf, the Body Snatcher collection containing the 1997 remastered episodes 
as well as new documentaries for Series 1 and 2 was released in 2007. This release showcased a storyboard construction of Body Snatcher, an unfinished script from 1987, which was finally completed in 2007 by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor who were working together for the first time since 1993. In December 2008 an anniversary DVD set entitled Red Dwarf, all the shows was released. Reworking the vanilla disc content of the two Just the Shows sets within a four packaging resembling a photo album, which carefully omitted information that no extras were included. This box set was re-released in a smaller slipcase size box reverting to the Just the Shows title in November 2009. The series is also available for download on iTunes. Blu-ray releases in 2016 BBC Worldwide began creating an up version of the first five series for release on Blu-ray due to demand from Japan. When asked about the project in 2017, Doug Naylor confirmed he had stopped it due to lacklustre picture quality. Magazine The Red Dwarf magazine The magazine part of the title changed to Smagazine. Prom Issue 3 was launched in 1992 by Fleetway Editions. It comprised a mix of news reviews, interviews, comic strips and competitions. The comic strips featured episode adaptations and original material including further stories of popular characters like Mr. Flibble, the polymorph and Ace Rimmer. Notably the comic strip stories holographic characters predominantly Rimmer were drawn in grayscale. This was at the request of Grant and Naylor, who had wanted to use the technique for the television series, but the process was deemed too expensive to produce. Despite achieving circulation figures of over 40,000 per month, the magazine's publisher decided to close the title down to concentrate on their other publications. A farewell issue was published cover dated January 1994 and featured the remaining interviews, features and comic strips that were to feature in the following issues. The official Red Dwarf fan club produces a periodical magazine for members titled Back to Reality. The previous volume of this magazine dating back to the 1990s was known as Better Than Life. U.S. Version Despite the original version having been broadcast on PBS a pilot episode for an American version was produced through Universal Studios with the intention of broadcasting on NBC in 1992. The show essentially followed the same story as the first episode of the original series. Using American actors for most of the main roles, Craig Bierko as Lister Chris Eigerman as Rimmer and Hint in Battle as Cat. Exceptions to this were Llewellyn who reprised his role as Crichton, and the British actress Jane Leaves who played Holly. It was written by Linwood Boomer, and directed by Jeffrey Melman with Grant and Naylor on board as creators and executive producers. Llewellyn Grant and Naylor traveled to America for the filming of the American pilot after production of the fifth series of the UK series. According to Llewellyn and Naylor, the cast were not satisfied with Linwood Boomer's script. Grant and Naylor rewrote the script, but although the cast preferred the rewrite, the script as filmed was closer to Boomer's version. The pilot episode includes footage from the UK series in its title sequence, although it did not retain the logo or the theme music of the UK series. During filming of the pilot the audience reaction was good, and it was felt that the story had been well received. The studio executives were not entirely happy with the pilot especially the casting but decided to give the project another chance with Grant and Naylor in charge. The intention was to shoot a promo video for the show in a small studio described by the writers as a garage. New cast members were hired for the roles of Cat and Rimmer Terry Farrell and Anthony Fusco respectively. 
This meant that unlike the original British series, the cast was all Caucasian which Charles referred to as White Dwarf. Chris Barry was asked to play Rimmer in the second pilot, but he declined. With a small budget and deadline, new scenes were quickly shot and mixed in with existing footage of the pilot and UK series five episodes to give an idea of the basic plot and character dynamics. Alongside proposed future episodes remakes of episodes from the original show, Llewellyn did not participate in the reshoot though clips from the British version were used to show the character. Despite the reshoots and recasting, the option on the pilot was not picked up. Farrell was cast almost immediately afterwards for Star Trek Deep Space Nine in which she was cast as Jadzia Dax. Similarly, one year later Jane Leaves was cast in Frasier as Daphne Moon. The cast of both the British and American versions criticized the casting of Red Dwarf USA, particularly the part of Lister who is portrayed in the British version as a likable slob, but in the US version as somewhat clean-cut. In the 2004 documentary Dwarfing USA, Danny John Jules said the only actor who could have successfully portrayed an American Lister was John Belushi. In a 2009 interview on Kevin Pollack's chat show, Bierko said that casting him as Lister was a huge mistake and also said a John Belushi type would have been better suited to the role. The American pilot has been heavily bootlegged, but it has never been broadcast on TV in any country. Excerpts from the first pilot are included in Dwarfing USA. A featurette on the making of the pilots included on the DVD release of Red Dwarf's fifth series. Because of rights clearance issues no footage from the second pilot is included in the featurette. Red Dwarf, the movie. Since the end of the eighth series in 1999, Doug Naylor has been attempting to make a feature length version of the show. A final draft of the script was written by Naylor, and flyers began circulating around certain websites. The flyer was genuine and had been distributed by Winchester Films to market the film overseas. Plot details were included as part of the teaser. It was set in the distant future, where Homo sapienoids, a race of cyborgs, had taken over the solar system and were wiping out the human race. Spaceships that tried to escape Earth were hunted down until only one remained. Red Dwarf, Naylor had scouted Australia to get an idea of locations and finance costs. With pre-production beginning in 2004 and filming planned for 2005. However, finding sufficient funding has been difficult. Naylor explained, at a Red Dwarf Dimension Jump convention that the film had been rejected by the BBC and the British Film Council. Reasons given for the rejections were that while the script was considered to be funny it was not ready. In 2012 material from early drafts of the film was incorporated into the series 10 finale. The Beginning Role-Playing Game Deep Seven Press released Red Dwarf a role-playing game in February 2003. Based on the series, the game allows its players to portray original characters within the Red Dwarf universe. Player characters can be human survivors, holograms, evolved house pets, various types of mechanoid or GELFs. A total of three products were released. For the game, the core 176-page rulebook, the AI screen and the series sourcebook. The series sourcebook contains plot summaries of each episode from series 1-8 as well as game rules for all major and minor characters from each series. The game has been praised for staying true to the comedic nature of the series, for its entertaining writing and for the detail to which the background material is explained. However, some reviewers found the game mechanics to be simplistic and uninspiring compared to other science fiction role-playing games on the market. Red Dwarf Knight 
On 14 February 1998, the night before the 10th anniversary of the show's pilot episode broadcast, BBC Two devoted an evening of programmes to the series under the banner of Red Dwarf Night. The evening consisted of a mixture of new and existing material and was introduced and linked by actor and fan Patrick Stewart. In addition, a series of special takeoffs on BBC Two's Idents, featuring the two logo Falling in Love with This Gutter, were used. The night began with Can't Smeg, Won't Smeg, a spoof of the cookery program Can't Cook, Won't Cook, presented by that show's host Ainsley Harriet, who had himself appeared as a GELF in the series 6 episode. Immohawk, Polymorph 2, taking place outside the continuity of the series, two teams were challenged to make the best chicken vindaloo. After a compilation bloopers show, featuring outtakes the next program was Universe Challenge, a spoof of University Challenge. Hosted by original University Challenge presenter Bamba Gascoigne, the show had a team of knowledgeable dwarf fans compete against a team consisting of Chris Barry, Craig Charles, Robert Llewellyn, Chloe Annette and Danny John Jules. This was followed by the Red Dwarf AZA half-hour documentary that chose a different aspect of the show to focus on for each letter of the alphabet. Talking heads on the episode included Stephen Hawking, Terry Pratchett, original producer, Paul Jackson, Mr. Blobby, Patrick Stewart, and a Dalek. Finally, the night ended with a showing of the episode Gunman of the Apocalypse. Dave Hollins, Space Cadet Red Dwarf was originally based on Dave Hollins, Space Cadet, a series of five sketches that aired in the BBC Radio 4 series Son of Cliché, produced by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor in 1984. The sketches recounted the adventures of Dave Hollands, a hapless space traveler who is marooned in space far from Earth. His only steady companion is the computer hab. Grant and Naylor chose to use the Dave Hollands space cadet sketches as a base for a television show after watching the 1974 film Dark Star. They changed some elements from the sketches. The seven trillion year figure was first changed to seven billion years and then to three million and the characters of Arnold Rimmer and the cat were created. The name Dave Hollins was changed to Dave Lister when a football player called Dave Hollins became well known and Hab was replaced by Holly. One of the voice actors from Son of Cliché, Chris Barry, went on to portray Arnold Rimmer in the Red Dwarf TV series. Episodes of Dave Hollins can be found on the two-disc Red Dwarf DVD set starting with Series 5 and ending with Series 8. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?